Good morning. How are you coping with lockdown? Are you doing all right like I am? Cut! Barry's done that one. I'm just going to show you how to do a bit of potting. Cut! John's done that one. Good morning. I'm just going to show you how to do a bit of pruning. Cut! Don't cut! Oh, whatever. Sharon's done that one. Good morning. Do you like building blocks? I like building blocks. That's how I like putting them one on top of the other. Cut! Dave's done that one. Good morning. I'm bringing you a photo today from the grounds of my big house. Over my shoulder, you can see right down across the grounds to Wally Brook. Cut! All nations did that one. Good morning. I'm standing in my shed this morning and I'm just going to give you a thought for the day with 25 points. Cut! Richard's done that. Well, can I just stand on our porch roof then and, and, and do the thought for the day from there? No! John did that and we don't have a porch. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. In Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 it says what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. And verse 10 says, Is there anything of which one can say, Look, this is something new? This is all part of the big moan of the teacher, as he's described, the writer of Ecclesiastes. He's described as the son of David, king in Jerusalem. He's fed up with life and having a big moan about it all. The chapter heading is, Everything is Meaningless. And he goes on to say that pleasures are meaningless, wisdom is meaningless, and even fun is meaningless, and work is pointless too. It's all very cheerful, isn't it, for a thought for the day, exactly what you want this time of the morning. Presuming it is the morning, or you might be watching this in the afternoon, but what do you want? You want a positive thought for the day, not something negative. But in all honesty, we probably all get days like that where we just, for good reason or no reason, we just feel down and we question whether everything we've been doing or trying to do is at any point. If we stay in that frame of mind, it's not very healthy and it can lead to suffering of anxiety and uh, even depression. And some people are just, their character is just basically melancholic. Um... Maybe even though you're a Christian, you suffer from this yourself. I'm not a doctor, uh, let alone a psychiatrist, and I can't even spell it. But um, you can you can do various tests to check out what your character is like. Um, some time ago, I did one for myself, and uh, my character has aspects of melancholia. So I can be melancholic as well as there's aspects of artistic genius and arrogance and stuff like that, but I mean, nobody's perfect. But thankfully, you see, God knows me, and, uh, well, he gave me a good wife who understands my pomposity. The writer of Ecclesiastes, however, in pouring out all his feelings to God, which is basically praying about how he feels, he goes on to recognise that God does everything and has everything in control. In chapter 3, verse 1, he says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heaven. Have you thought that the whole of the lockdown process and all, all of this, this isn't happened by accident. God is in overall control. He has planned and has a purpose in this for, for us as individuals and for the whole world. Have you ever thought of that? that? This is all part of God's plan and purpose. He's not being caught out. He's not trying to cope with this sudden spread of this virus. God has this as part of his great universal plan for the world. That's, that's a big thought, isn't it? The people who try and tell you exactly what that is and what his plan and purpose is are probably just waffling in the wind. So be careful with what you read and what you see on YouTube and so on. Because a lot of it is just junk. But God, the Bible tells us through his word, God tells us through his word in the Bible that there is a plan and purpose for everything under heaven. Consider for a minute the Lord himself, Jesus. Was he always happy and at peace? Not at all. 
You'll know the stories as well as I do. The times he was happy, uh, the first story of all, uh, at a wedding where he was celebrating with others, where he cried over the unbelief of people. He raged at those who abused the temple, turned the tables over and made whips even. I mean, he did, he did that in quite a rage. And there are stories where he, he's revealed as being sorrowful and even fearful. That the sweat, he sweat drops of blood and asked his father if there was any way that he could get out of going to the cross and doing what he knew he had to do. The point is that we all need to be more like Jesus. He went to the cross. Thankfully, most of us won't. But he went to the cross because that was God's will for him. It's not, thankfully, God's will for all of us to go anywhere near the cross. It was his will for him to do that so that he could save us, and we can't obviously do that. The conclusion of the matter is for us to honour and respect God and be obedient in whatever our circumstances be obedient to whatever he has planned for us as individuals I think I illustrated at the beginning that it's no point trying to copy what others have already done God knows us individually and has a particular plan for each and every one of us we can pretend all we want we can try and copy others we can pretend to have some sort of calling but god knows us we can't hide anything from us from him he knows us inside out he knows what we're saying he knows what we're going to say he never forgets what we've already said and as we trust him he takes everything he works everything together day after day hour by hour minute by minute for our own good according to his plans and his purposes safe in the arms of jesus i've had that song in my mind the last few days in times like these we need a savior in times like these we need an anchor be very sure be very sure your anchor holds to the solid rock have a great day i hope it's helpful Keep, keep well, keep safe and God bless you.